Greetings, marketing students. Dr. Rodriguez here. And now we're going to work through a theory of planned behavior analytical example. Now what you see here is very similar to the worksheet, the Excel uh, worksheet that you will be working on for this module's analytical exercise. Now the first tab right here is just informational. It should just be a refresher of what you've already learned by watching the previous videos about the theory of planned behavior, as well as uh, reading the assigned articles. So we see here the basic model for the theory of planned behavior. There's three determining factors, also known as antecedents, that influence intention. So that's attitudes toward the behavior, subjective norms, and perceived behavioral control, which determine intentions to perform the behavior and then intentions lead to behavior itself assuming that the person indeed has control over the action. Down here we have a little description, a reminder of what attitude is. You should know this very well from module two but in case you need a review, uh, attitude toward the behavior is the extent to which a person has a favorable or unfavorable appraisal of a given behavior. It consists of behavioral beliefs and outcome evaluations, and the person's attitude toward the behavior is expected to be directly proportional to the summative belief composite. In other words, the sum of these products of the beliefs times the evaluations. And again, this is just review of the Fishbein multi-attribute model. Then we have subjective norms which is a social pressure to perform or not to perform a given behavior, and perceived behavioral control, which is people's perception of the ease or difficulty of performing the behavior of interest. Now for this example, we're working with this particular uh, so study. So the survey is found here and the data from the study is on this tab right here. So the study description is given to you at the top. This is a survey of the factors that influence consumers' intentions to recommend to a friend that they register to listen to a 90-minute timeshare presentation at a four-star resort in Orlando, that's Orlando, Florida, in exchange for a one-night free stay for the friend and themselves. So if you've lived in Florida any amount of time and have ever been to Orlando, you may have encountered this where the timeshare resorts uh, do a lot of things to incentivize people to come and listen to a 90 minute presentation. And one of the things that they may do is uh, to uh, incentivize a timeshare owner to invite a friend or family member to listen to a timeshare presentation and in exchange, the friend and the timeshare owner both get a free night stay at the resort. The study is conducted by a timeshare company, Buena Siesta Vacations, with the goal of identifying the main factors influencing intentions to recommend registration for the timeshare presentation so that the company can influence those factors that are currently weak in order to increase consumers' recommendation intentions. The sample of survey respondents came from the population of timeshare owners who own with Buena Siesta. So recall that you have to be very specific about what your population of interest is. And a small sample was selected initially to elicit their salient beliefs for their attitudes, subjective norms, and perceived control regarding recommended that a friend register to attend the timeshare presentation. And then here we have the survey questions for each variable in the model. So attitude toward the specific action. Am I recommending a friend to register to listen to a 90 minute timeshare presentation? Da -da 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 -da. Would be unfavorable, favorable, unpleasant, pleasant. Subjective norm, most people who are important to me would do the behavior. And so agree or disagree. A second item says most people like me recommend a friend to register for the timeshare uh, presentation, unlikely to likely. So all of these are one to seven scales. Perceived behavioral control. I'm confident that I can recommend 
the registration true to false and then another one here my recommending a friend to register is up to me so again getting at how much control you have over the behavior and then lastly the intentions i intend to recommend a friend to register for the timeshare presentation unlikely likely next let's take a look at the data tab and this stands for theory of planned behavior and this is the data for our example that we're working out and this part right here represents the raw data from the survey so this is all of the responses that you know various respondents gave to the attitude items and so you see here that there's only one column but there was two questions so what this means is that the two the responses to these two items were added together to form a composite score and so instead of having one column for this attitude rating and another column for this one we add them together and so that's what we have here the same for the subjective norm items there's two questions here and perceived behavioral control as well so in all of these cases the responses were added together so for example here you have a 10 even though it's only a scale from 1 to 7 so that means this is the sum of the two scale ratings and so we have here attitude subjective norm perceived behavioral control and intention and you see here we have an additional variable and that is income so participants uh, were also asked to rate their income level and there was two main categories here either their income is greater than fifty thousand dollars annually or it is less than fifty thousand dollars annually and the reason why we did this is because again this can be used as a segmentation variable and we can compare the results for the uh, behavioral intentions between these two groups and it may be wise to uh, either focus on one group versus the other or to target both but with different marketing mix uh, strategies to influence their intentions more on that in just a moment now over here you see standardized data and what that basically means is that each of these scores these ratings have been converted to what's known as a z-score so if you've taken a uh, statistics course before you should have heard about z-scores and what a z-score does is it basically takes the the raw score and it subtracts the average for the set of scores that it is uh, a part of so this is part of a group of in this case consumers whose income is greater than fifty thousand if we didn't have this distinguishing variable then we would just you know have all of the scores uh, in this attitude column would, uh, would would compute the average and then you subtract the average from each score and divide that and then divide by the standard deviation for the set of scores and so this has been done here very simply by using the Excel function standardize and specifying which which value we are standardizing and then you have to so that's right here and then you specify where uh, what the average is that you are subtracting from the value and so rather than taking the time to compute that average myself I could just tell it you know where the uh, the range of value is values is and to compute the average and so that's what it's going to subtract and the same for the standard deviation I just used the standard deviation function told it what range of values to compute the standard deviation for and then it's going to sub um, divide by this particular standard deviation and so this is being uh, done for the subjective norm variable the perceived behavioral control variable and the intention so you'll see some values are negative 
and that's normal because you're subtracting the mean. So if the mean is larger than the value, uh, than the rating, then you will probably get a negative uh, score, and that's okay. And so the reason why we standardize the data is because when we conduct our multiple regression analysis, we want to obtain the standardized regression coefficients, which tell us the uh, weight of influence of each of these variables on uh, behavioral intentions. So in order to get the standardized regression coefficients, we have to standardize the data that we will be using as input into the regression equation. Now over here we have averages and for this we're just using the unstandardized data because then we can focus on the range of values uh, that are possible in the scale to determine uh, you know whether the the level the magnitude of the attitude of the averages for each of these is high or low. So for example here the scales uh, scale ranged from 2 to 14 because it's two items that you rate on a scale from 1 to 7 and we're adding those together so you can get the, as a, the low score you could get as a 2 right so if you circled a 1 on both items right here so if I circle a 1 and a 1 that's the lowest I can't go any lower than that so that means that the lowest score that I can have for this item is a 2 right and if I circled two sevens, you know, those, that's the highest possible rating I could give on both of those, then those are going to be added together. So that gives me 14, right? So this, the, uh, the values that are going to be in this column can range anywhere from a two to a 14. You won't find any ones. You won't find any 15s or 16s, just two to 14. And so we can see here that for the group of people whose income is greater than 50,000, the attitude toward recommending a timeshare presentation to a friend is a 5.5, which is, uh, you know, the midpoint of the scale here would be a 7, right, in between 2 and 14, uh, anywhere between um, a 7 and 8. And so this is much lower, so this is lower than the midpoint, so, you know, pretty low. Uh, this one's a little bit higher. And then over here, subjective norm, also pretty low. Uh, the subjective norm is slightly higher for those with a lower income than 50,000. And then perceived behavioral control is a little bit higher. Uh, it's, it's about neutral. It's about the, in the middle point of the scale. Um, and again, it's a little bit higher for this group. And intention, now it's a scale from one to seven. So this was just one item scored from one to seven. And we can see that for those with income greater than 50,000, the intention uh, on average was a three. So that's lower than the, uh, the scale midpoint. But for those who, whose income was less than 50,000, the average intention is a five, which is above the scale midpoint. And then you might ask yourself, well, are these two significantly different from each other? If you'll remember from the emotion analysis when we did A-B tests, well, we have an A-B test here. So we can compare these two groups. These two groups would be an independent samples t-test because these, are, these two groups are independent of each other. Their ratings are, are completely different from each other. And to see whether these groups significantly differ. And so we have, uh, again, using the Excel t-test function, we specify the two, where the two groups are that we're comparing. So here's the over 50,000 income group. Here's the less than 50,000 income group. And so we tell it where those uh, arrays are, those sets of, of values. We specify it's a two-tailed test, meaning we don't have any specific prediction about which group will have a higher attitude. And then this is an independent uh, t-test, so we put tail type uh, test type 2. And so that gives us the probability, all right, so the p-value, uh, and that's the probability of falsely rejecting the null hypothesis, which is that there is no difference. So if we look at this and uh, it's less than p uh, of 0.05, which is our standard, we're going to say, yes, there is a difference. So the null hypothesis is wrong. These, these two groups do differ. 
this is the probability that we'd be making a mistake in in saying this and saying that yes the groups differ all right and so each of these is less than 0.05 and again here i just use this function the if function uh, and the the um, the logical test is if this value the p value is less than 0.05 then put a yes in that uh, cell. If it's not true, then put a no. And uh, all across the board, these are less than 0.05. So we have yes, yes, yes. Okay, so, and then we just look at it and we can see, okay, these are different from each other. What is the difference? Well, the attitudes are significantly higher for those who make less than 50,000. It's significantly lower for those who make more than 50,000. And uh, the same pattern occurs for the subjective norm, perceived behavioral control and intentions. So that gives us an idea of the uh, average uh, ratings for, for each of these. And now the next part would be to conduct the multiple regression analysis to determine how influential are each of these in determining intention so that uh, our timeshare marketing department can focus on the most influential uh, factor with a marketing mix um, tactic to improve that so that we can positively influence intentions.